from declining incoming calls while you're doing research, amazing multitasking tools. The dynamic island is by far the best iPhone feature that's found on basically modern day iPhones. Especially now that Android phones are now starting to copy the dynamic island. Like look at this light torch. That's a dead on one on one copy from Android to iOS. So let me break down all the amazing things the dynamic island can do. Because I like to address a massive issue that Apple has with the dynamic island. There's no like guided tutorial from Apple how to like use this, how to switch between apps or hide it completely. Which is why very few are familiar on how to actually use it to its full potential. For starters, the benefit with the dynamic island, whenever I dock my phone to charge, it gives me direct feedback when charge is being delivered. So I don't have to get super close to the screen to make sure I see the little green indicator turn green. Dynamic Island does that cool animation. And then when you pair it with like AirPods or like Beats as an example, you put them on in your ear, you'll see direct feedback of the battery percentage right there on your device. In addition to that, if I repeat the process, if you long hold while the status right there gives you more additional information on the product. And then during a phone call, if you accept the call, and you just move it up like this, you'll see the audio waves of the phone call, right? But then if you long code, you have quick access to put the caller on speaker or hang up directly. Or if you decide to long hold again, it will take you directly to the phone app. This works across other apps as well. And for any information that's on the dynamic island, if you swipe, it will actually hide it and you can reverse the swipe to bring it back. For instance, if I go ahead and launch a third party music app this time, not the native one from Apple, like YouTube Music as an example, if I hit play, lower that down for a bit. On the top, I actually can see the album artwork showing me that something's playing in the background. And if I do a swipe like I was showing you earlier, I can hide it or repeat the process. Regardless if it's first party or non first party, because if I go ahead and go on Apple Music and repeat the same process, it does the exact same thing. I love the fact it's universal. So non Apple Music subscribers can also benefit off of this. So if the Dynamic Island ever becomes annoying, it's good to know you could just hide it away if you need to. And then again, any app, you could do that to have additional shortcuts, airdrop ability, or tap again to take you to that app entirely like it did with the phone app I was showing you earlier. Now these next ones are really amazing. But before I get started on those, if you can take two seconds to hit that like button, a like, that'd be truly appreciated because I like to keep these videos sponsor free from any integrated ads and such that you've seen because I'm personally kind of getting tired of them. So thank you for those that took the two seconds to just hit that like button and aiding to keep my channel powered by the viewers, not from brands. And then for iOS 26, if you launch control center and you launch the flashlight, it will activate your torch. You can let it sit back and if you exit, you long code, it will pop up this animation, which allows you to basically increase the brightness, decrease it, or put it in like spotlight mode. And this indicator looks really cool, especially if you have like something else in the background, like if you have music playing, we can multitask this way as well, while still having the light torch still enabled. So we literally have two things going on at once. And we could add more stuff too. For instance, if we have like a timer going on, if we launch the clock app, and we start a stopwatch and we exit out of here. You can switch between three apps just by simply tapping on the icon. You can basically shuffle it and just decide to like turn it off or switch between or just hide it completely by swiping to the left side. But if you swipe right and you swipe up, it'll bring up the previous one that was playing. So a swipe up will bring the third or second app that's in the background. A swipe left will go back to that one single app and a swipe left again will hide it completely. You can also just swipe up and swipe up to like constantly like rotate. And if you like to select the app, you could just long hold, pause, and then long hold, stop, or end. And you'll find that it's also compatible with a lot of like third party apps as well as first party apps. For instance, if we do like screen recording, if I include a microphone as an example, hit screen record, we have the actual countdown right above there. Then you can also tap on top to end the recording as well. And it gives you real world feedback when the screen capture is captured. And if there's an error, it'll pop up right there as well. Additionally, if you're using an iPhone that has like built in satellite connectivity, in case of emergency, you have to send like a message, a SOS message, or you just want to get a hold of somebody. Just open up Control Center, long hold this section of your uh, basically like your Wi Fi control and such. 
and just look for a satellite. Tap on the satellite, it will launch the satellite shortcut to your settings. It could start the satellite demo or send a message right now if you don't have any reception, as well as share your location. Also see roadside assist or emerge the SOS. The demo is free to use. These four options will only be available if you see a satellite icon where your Wi-Fi or cellular reception was supposed to be. That basically tells you you have nothing and you could actually use this as a last resort. And then the Fit Tracking app now. If you launch the fitness app, you can now start a workout right here and you do not need to have an Apple Watch to actually track it. You see, if you're using the latest generation, or latest generation AirPods, these are the AirPods Pro 3, they have a built-in heart rate sensor. While I'm wearing these, I'll see a number two icon above here and I'll be able to connect to that device to monitor my calorie tracking as well as my heart rate. And once I do that, I could simply just tap start if we exit out of here, if I exit out of here, if I long hold, it will tell me how long I've been working out for. If I'm, depending on the workout, it will show you my distance. If I'm cycling or running, as an example, I could, I could even do like little segments too. As well as pause my workout or resume my workout and my segment status right there as well. And we reverse back to the app and I click on it. And if I bring up this little menu, I go stop viewing if I don't want it to see my dynamic island. So now it just shows me the media that's currently playing. Even works the same way on the Apple Watch as well. This section, you can enable to view on the Apple Watch or end the view on the Dynamic Island. And if you do a lot of voice recording, you can just let it record and you'll see your audio wave feedback right there, making sure that everything is working properly in case you have a third party mic hooked up to your iPhone. Of course, you can just tap to go back and end the voice memo recording right here. And if you have home pods or compatible third party speakers, if you walk by it, the dynamic island will give you feedback, allowing you to quickly connect to whatever audio you're listening to from your iPhone speaker to external audio sources by a simple tap. And now I don't even have to be in the same room or ask Siri to verbally change the track when I could just tap once and quickly have access to all my media controls, including external speaker sources. Even smart locks work really well with the dynamic island as well as an excellent tool to give you real-time feedback when a product is working properly. And if you ever use Apple Maps or Google Maps, direction, turn by turn directions will also be displayed on the island automatically. And you can maximize it to see more additional information. And then if you ever use Uber, Lyft, or anything that requires a mobile progress status like Domino's or Starbucks, in real time, the Dynamic Island will be able to show you your progress on how your order is doing and when it's ready for pickup. It even works at Best Buy too. And then if you'd like to monitor your favorite game sport score that's going on live, Dynamic Island can also display that as well without an Apple TV Plus subscription. And to set this up, you will need to download the Apple Sport app. It's free to use. There's no subscription required. Just open it. And right above here, you'll see some of my teams I selected I like to track. I can go back to my previous tracks as well on the previous teams I've selected in my menu. Or I can also skip ahead and see what's upcoming. It will also show me upcoming games on top of my Dynamic Island as well. So to set up your, your favorite teams, your sports and stuff like that, just tap the home icon right here. Tap on edit. And here you can add your leads, your teams, as well as other categories you like to follow like NBA, NASCAR, you'll be surprised how many sports Apple TV yet. This Apple Sport game app, this Apple Sport app actually supports, even supports F1 as well. And once you tap the star and you add, you can reverse back if you don't like it and just tap check mark and automatically your dynamic island will give you a notification when your favorite sports are playing. Additionally, if you have an Apple Watch, you'll, you'll also will see that live activity on your wrist as well in one of these live activity spaces right here. And if you click on one of these categories and go at the very bottom, it will even tell you the location where the game will be played as well as the exact time. And then there's amazing third party apps like Rocket as an example, which will give you real time information on performance numbers of your iPhone if you're into that type of data. And based off all that, it's obvious that the Dynamic Island is definitely Apple's nice secret weapon currently. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think about the Dynamic Island? Is there a feature we might have missed and overlooked? Feel free to comment down below if there is one that you'd like to share with everybody else. In fact, if you have some app recommendations, feel free to also comment down below, as I think that's a great idea to make a future video breaking down all the best apps, third-party apps you can download that'll give us more cool usage on new ways we can start using the Dynamic Island to its full potential. 
So if you're excited for that video, make sure you are subscribed for the top amazing third-party apps that take advantage of the dynamic island. Thank you so much for watching.